Hey Ani Rogers, how you doing? It's Saturday. I'm Phoebe if you're new to the channel. Um, <laughs> apologies if this video has come out with a bit of a gap. Um, right now, or previously when you're watching the, vid the like laptop, like desktop that has Adobe Premiere, which I edit the videos on, um, it's decided to not turn on. So it's currently being fixed and I don't know when it will be done. So I'm sorry if there's been like a break, it'll probably be like a week or just I'll have one video for two weeks and then we'll be back and I might post more vids than usual for a bit to catch up. I'm still gonna film them, I just can't edit them so I'm sorry about that. Today though, um, Nelson's coming, the Golden Retriever, and I'm off to go see um, Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix in concert, which means the Melbourne Symphony Orchestra plays the score and you watch the film. Pretty fab, quite excited. Um, Nicholas Hooper composed the score for the fifth film. I really like um, the Alexander Desplat and the, I can't remember the guy, Nicholas, no, someone else for the sixth. But the fifth's good too. One of my fave songs being Journey to Hogwarts because the start of it's just, just great. I'll maybe play it in this one, in this video. But yeah, Nelson is coming. I'm gonna do some more cooking up from this cookbook this weekend because um, I technically have to give it back to the library. Um, this week, this past week was good though. I got a lot done. Tick oh my god, I'm in a sneezy mood. This week has been good though. I have been super productive conquered some assignments <laughs> um, for a masculinity assignment I had to observe some men so I sat at my uni and observed men well I didn't really notice anything I hadn't noticed before like man spreading body language things like that but our lecturer was very um, sure to emphasize that if someone asks you what you're doing do not say you're observing men say you were just doing something for a sociology assignment um, for the university and don't engage. <laughs> Your notes look a bit weird. Mine definitely did. <laughs> a couple of nights ago, The Handmaid's Tale finale came out for season three. I'll skip to this number if that's not your thing. Oh my god! From the start with the light flashing on June's face, from the flashback, you're like stressed as heck and also you're just not sure from the start of the episode whether her plan's gonna work. Getting that 53, which turned out to be like, I think like 163 was a number I read. Kids out to Canada. So you're just stressed as heck and then from the moment when um commander winslow no june's current commander um is reading to the children i know that's slightly creepy because apparently he was reading shutter island but it's still like a beautiful <laughs> scene um i was crying bawling um snotty tears <sighs> so good though i don't think i've watched an episode of tv before that has been so hard to watch, so like gripping to watch, so satisfying, but like, oh, an ordeal. I know for many people, The Handmaid's Tale is like they don't want to watch it because it's a lot. Um, themes of rape, abuse, you know, they're all there. Um, but I would say that like Margaret Atwood and the people who write for the show, um, well, Margaret Atwood when she wrote the book in the 70s or 80s. She made sure she wrote it and didn't include anything that wasn't already happening at that time or hadn't already happened. Like it's stuff and it happens and it's not gory, like you don't see anything, most of it's just implied. Um, so while it is really stressful um, to watch at times, it's really good but I'm not going to be one of those people who's like why don't you watch it um, if you watch it for the reasons that you just, you just get enough stress <laughs> from the news and everyday life so you do you. This week I finished um, Normal People by Sally Rooney, that really popular book for young adults at the moment. Um, I don't really know how I feel about it, like if it was made into a movie I don't know if I'd be that interested in seeing it but I did find myself reading it in every spare moment that I had so that counts as something. I like the arc that the characters went on. I don't know, it's just, it's a good read. I don't know, I'm still formulating my thoughts on that. I don't really think that I loved it but I don't think it's something you, you head over heels love you just appreciate it felt very true to young adult life you know in some ways but then not at all in others I don't know what were your thoughts people <laughs> if you've read it
Brunches. It's now Sunday. Nelson's here, as you've seen. Ugh. Dreamboat. Um, also, he's a dog that, for all the things he steps in, for all the poo he eats, his breath and his coat just always smell neutral. It's quite a skill. <laughs> so yesterday I went to the Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix in concert and wasn't as good as the um, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire in concert. I like the score more um, for this one. My seat was just really crap. Hamer Hall, which is like pretty central, big, like seriously huge, um, like concert space. I was at like the top circle out of like the three different layers and I was a second back row. And I don't know if it was just like the configuration of the hall being that I was at like the highest point or that it was a sort of like unusually warm day for winter. It is today too. It's like, feels like the end of winter. Well, that's not the case because a cold front in, is about to come but that weather meant that everyone was like being out walking and therefore it worked up a bit of a smet but the sweat but the, like bo smell around me was really unpleasant and i was just in the middle of like a lot of groups also like people were taking photos and filming parts of it and children were kicking my seat behind me so yeah all those factors not ideal wasn't hugely expensive but what is with these people not like just learning theater etiquette it's not hugely different to like cinema etiquette I say that so it's understood that I'm not just thinking it's like a highbrow thing that those who don't have the money to access it don't have like the cultural capital to like navigate but yeah can we just not film things like a phone light's really distracting and I'm very sensitive to like stimulus so mm. anyway I still did cry in the odd bit um, this morning I filmed a meal preppy type video, haven't done one of them in a while, so I hope you enjoy that when that comes out. Um, I'm super set for delish food throughout the week. It won't last very long because it never does, but... And I just purchased some books because I finished my... What, the one that I have and I... I've been wanting to read, you know, is it Our Shared Self, the Emma Watson book club, like feminist book club list? Um, read some books on there. So anyway, I bought five books from book depository so let me show you i got call me by your name haven't read that yet about time um letters to my fanny that's by a uk i think she's a television host as well but anyway um little women because i definitely want to read that before the amazing film comes out have you seen the trailer 
so excited for that with Saoirse Ronan, Emma Watson, lots of other people, Timothy Chalamet, that I, Meryl Streep, and Laura Dern. Oh my gosh, I got them all. Apart from the two other sisters. Anyway, I got the Vagina Monologues, um, which is on that Shared Self Emma Watson book club reading list, and The Body Keeps Score, which is a new book talking about trauma and how perhaps a different way it could be treated using the mind, brain and body by some person who's spent like 30 years studying trauma. But I love the, the cover of that book too. It looks like a Matisse artwork. Anyway, I'm pumped about them. I think I'm just gonna... I don't think I actually have fully read Bend It Like Beckham and it's just a super short book so I think I'm just gonna read that while they take a little while to arrive but I'm so excited for the next Margaret Atwood book, The Tenements or Testaments. It's like set in the world of The Handmaid's Tale but like 14 years on so I don't think it, it's not gonna be probably not the same characters but just more of that world. Ooh, so exciting. That comes out in like a month or like two weeks probably when this video comes out. Ugh, I really hope our computer situation fixes itself. My mum is like whipping up lots of fab projects, crochet wise, patchwork wise. I should have, dang it, I should have um taken a pic or something of, she made these really cool pillows for my aunt and they're made out of like vintage blankets. Super cool. Anyway, she knitted, she crocheted me a scarf using some leftover um, acrylic she made a blanket out of. So, I am feeling very chuffed with this. It's really great because it's grey, um, but has like little flecks of blue in it. So it goes well with blue or purple, which I wear a lot of, um, but also like just black. But yeah, a super nice weave. Yeah, you for homemade things <laughs> that um, feel a bit more special. Also, chunky scarves like this are super flattering, I think, so yay. <laughs> I'm now going to re-watch a documentary which I'm going to be writing an essay on called The Gleaners by Agnes Varda. I've printed off a pic of her because she's a new fave person of mine. It's this wonderful woman. She's a... she recently passed away in May of this year, but she was a director, filmmaker, largely of documentaries, and she made films from the French New Wave era. She was like one of the only, if the only female director of the French New Wave, which was like the period after World War II in the 60s I think mainly in France. A lot of super cool films came out of France then in this era called the French New Wave, but she's super endearing. Um, a recent documentary that you might be more familiar with is Faces Places, but The Gleaners was this documentary she made in 2000 and she made it on like a handheld video like home video type camera so it has this really nice feel to it and she goes around the whole whole of France pretty much and documents um, and talks to like the modern day gleaners. Gleaners being you know those pictures those paintings I'll put one up of women like bent over they have like straw on their back and they're leaning over like a field um, that looks like the harvest has already been picked and they're just going up going through it after the harvest has been picked and picking up like the seconds or the leftovers of wheat generally. But she documents like gleaners of potatoes, of grapes, oysters, people who like dumpster dive, people who like glean trash as well and like reuse it. So it has this really lovely environmental message like finding beauty and use in the often forgotten, neglected, um, seconds type of thing. People who glean markets, you know, go through and pick up food and use that from what's left behind so I really like it. Anyone who like, likes op shopping or just cares about the environment or finding the beauty in things that are often neglected I think you'd really like it. It's not exactly easy to find. I don't think it's on iTunes but maybe watch the trailer clips of it on YouTube. It's a really really lovely documentary and just has these really subtle beautiful um, environmental themes, messages that I would totes recommend you watch over like, surprise surprise, even like um, Cowspiracy, but I'm sort of thinking um, Inconvenient Truth. Cowspiracy is important, <laughs> that needs to be watched, but um, yeah, Inconvenient Truth. I watched that when I was too young because I still <laughs> just feel like traumatised from that. I mean, I guess the point, like he has this massive gra graph and the red line of like emissions and things is just exponential and it's terrifying. 
and he doesn't offer any solutions um, and there's not a glimmer of hope but the gleaners is all about using what you've already got so it feels like a warm hug anyway I'm gonna watch that now Honey Bunches, it's Thursday now. It feels like Friday, I'm so knackered. But, um, meant to pick up the camera, I just haven't. Because all my subjects have done this thing where they've made the main essay, which is worth 50% of each unit, due around, have I already said this? Shit, um, they made it due like kinda soon, and so I'm just having to like pump it, you know? <laughs> like, so many readings so much writing um already it's only week four well it's already week four um anyway i felt a bit overwhelmed but i've done some thorough planning and i'm feeling like gotta just keep swimming you know <laughs> watched some fab films in my film studies um classes i watched Cla casablanca jaws and rebel without a cause anyway upshot of that is and I hadn't seen them you know I should have like they're kind of classics but I feel like for our generation there's so much there's so many classics so many things you need to know that it's quite overwhelming and you, and you can't inevitably have seen them all um that's how I felt growing up anyway but now I know where the lot the quotes which are often reused and recycled a lot in film and tv these days um we uh, I need a bigger uh, I'm gonna need a bigger boat um that's reused in friends then in Rebel Without a Cause, the line, you're tearing me apart, that's reused in the film The Room, which is like the worst movie ever. I think, I think that's where I got it from. You're tearing me apart, Lisa. I don't recommend watching that, but um, we had two as part of film studies. What other quotes? Oh yeah, um, he's looking at you, kid, or you're, he's, I'm looking at you, kid. He's looking, at, he's looking at you, kid. That's in Casablanca. I don't know what exactly the words are, but so now you know, and <laughs> don't have the time to watch them. The Jaws plot is just so shit. <laughs> like, it works, and it hadn't been done before, so it was revolutionary in that sense, but it's just a big shark that's just killing everyone, and they go and get the shark. I just don't see how that can be elaborated on or reinvented for short sh uh, Jaws 2. There was Jaws of 3, there was like a Jaws 3D. Like, just stop people with the money making franchisee thing. What else is on my mind? The rainforest burning? Um, Greta Thunberg sailing across the Pacific, is that the right ocean? Sailing from the UK to New York for, is it the UN Climate Conference, G20? I think they're two separate things. Need to check that. Go her. Living legend. If she's not ex inspiring you to make a small change. And, ooh, last night I watched Simon Amstel, Amstel, Amstel's, um, Netflix comedy special. Do watch it. So good. It's like... I feel like comedies maybe, I'm not a massive comedy f person so I don't exactly know what I'm talking about but if you like Hannah Gadsby's In The Net because it was more of like a conscious comedy or just like a really open, genuine, sincere show then do watch his thing. If you've watched the vlogs for a while I recommended his new film called Benjamin. Um, but yeah his Netflix special is fab, it touches on everything from like homophobia, it's got LGBTQ themes, talks about poo, the royal family shamans going to France when he was 18 and very proactively losing his virginity not that we like that word here or ever <laughs> has a few vegan messages in it in it because he is himself that he does it in a way where he will laugh and maybe then go home and make a change so yeah do watch it seriously good conscious comedy I'm eating my caramel slice I'll link the recipe below if I remember oh my mum is on like such a sewing making kick um, she even said the other day, quote unquote, I love making things for you, Phoebe. 
<laughs> my mum's a real perfectionist um, and so she does everything super well in the craft slash cooking slash anything she executes department which just means she doesn't whip through a lot of projects so if she dedicates a bit of time and perfection attention to you then you're doing well anyway she so, so i showed you the scarf she made me another bag because the other one she made me needed to go in the wash and she thought i could do with another one i think the fabric coordination on this one is popping got the crochet flowers on, on one side so you can have it up against your body and it doesn't like rub the crochet flowers this pattern's great because i can wear it more with blue denim things but also obviously still goes with everything with the whole black thing as well 